From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Christopher Cruz reporting. The U.S. Supreme Court on Tuesday upheld the Trump administration's travel restrictions on citizens from five mostly Muslim countries. It handed President Trump a victory in enforcing one of his most controversial policies. The president called the ruling a victory for the American people and the Constitution. We have to be tough and we have to be safe and we have to be secure. At a minimum, we have to make sure that we vet people coming into the country. We know who's coming in. We know where they're coming from. We just have to know who's coming here. In a five to four decision, the high court justices ruled that the president does have the constitutional authority under U.S. immigration laws to limit travel from foreign countries regarding national security concerns, as the administration has argued. Mr. Trump says his trade policies are not responsible for Harley-Davidson's decision to move some motorcycle production overseas. Associated Press correspondent Ben Thomas reports. Harley-Davidson says it's making the move because of the retaliatory tariffs it's facing in the escalating trade dispute between the U.S. and the European Union. But President Trump says that's an excuse. Trump warns that any shift in production will be the beginning of the end for Harley-Davidson adding the aura will be gone and they will be taxed like never before. He says a Harley-Davidson should never be built in another country, never. Ben Thomas, Washington. A senior State Department official has told reporters the U.S. expects companies throughout the world to cut their crude oil imports from Iran to zero by November 4th or face U.S. sanctions. This is VOA News. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani insisted in a speech Tuesday that the country's economic situation is not as dire as many claim it to be. Correspondent Edward Uranian reports for VOA from Cairo. In a nationally televised speech Tuesday meant to reassure the Iranian public, President Hassan Rouhani claimed the country's economic situation is not as bleak as some are making it out to be and that the current crisis over the value of the national currency, the rial, is linked to an economic and psychological war with the United States. Rouhani asks why people are suddenly worried about their economic future now. He insists that Iran's economic indicators are not dire and that government revenues have not yet fallen. Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. The UN Commission of Inquiry on Syria is accusing all warring factions in that country of committing war crimes and crimes against humanity in the battle for control of eastern Ghouta, a besieged enclave in the suburbs of the capital, Damascus. Correspondent Lisa Schlein reports for VOA from Geneva. The UN investigators call the method of warfare employed in eastern Ghouta barbaric and medieval, marked by the most brutal forms of violence with civilians as the primary victims. The chair of the UN Commission of Inquiry, Paolo Sergio Pinero, says no one in this war has clean hands. Between February and April, he says pro-government forces launch daily aerial and ground bombardments, killing hundreds of people and destroying the essentials of civilian life. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. Ethiopia's Prime Minister greeted an Eritrean delegation on Tuesday at the start of the first high-level meeting in nearly two decades between representatives of the two countries. The meeting is raising hopes of ending one of Africa's most intractable uh, military standoffs. The U.S. military has deployed the third U.S. aircraft carrier this year to patrol the South China Sea. The nuclear-powered USS Ronald Reagan, carrying more than 70 aircraft, anchored in Manila Bay on Tuesday. The U.S. has no territorial claims in the region, but has declared freedom of navigation and overflight in the waters is in the country's national interests. China has reportedly deployed anti-ship missiles and other missiles to the disputed reefs in the Spratly Islands. You can find more on these and other late-breaking and developing stories from around the world around the clock at voanews.com and on the VOA News mobile app. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News. That's the latest world news from VOA News.